for the what was their starter doing tonight that, that kind of kept the guys off balance for a while? Yeah, there was. I mean, it's repetitive, but there was a contrast in looks he was giving our guys. I mean, there was uptick and rise to the fastball. Um, good drop on the changeup, landing the breaking ball pretty good. I, I think slider better than the curveball, if I remember right. You know, we're always charting all that stuff. Um, and then we kind of just didn't execute either. I mean, you definitely have to tip your cap uh, to how he threw. Um, it was a different version of, of executing on the pitching side because <coughs> Wild was so dynamic last night. Uh, but Ruther, Rutherford was, was equal to the task. And the only thing I'd throw in there as an asterisk was we get one miscommunication on some base running and a couple at bats where I, I know guys wish they could do them over. But again, it takes two to tango. Rutherford was making good pitches. And uh, I think some of that stuff he has, you know, we, we drew some walks, but it's, um, you know, part of the reason we're not barreling them up. Some of that stuff is moving a lot and shooting out of the zone, even though it starts in the zone. So if you can take it, maybe you earn yourself a walk or you get into a better count. But if you, if you go after it, it's tough to barrel up. Yeah, got in a little bit of a rhythm, but I mean, I think we can, you know, um, we make a great, it would have required a great defensive play. Um, you, you erase one uh, base runner and then Canton, kudos to him, man. When, when the coach gives you an opportunity, you, you get in there and you take advantage of it. I, I don't, I don't, I didn't do it as a player, so I don't have the magic formula, but the guy took uh, the best swing of the night minus Blake Burke. Um, I don't know if we should count that anyway. So, um, you, you kind of remove that Canton ball that he smoked up the middle for two RBIs, if I'm not mistaken. He was he was about as good as it gets. I mean, him and Doe ba both are going through a really good lineup. Uh, there's a good approach. There's kind of some variance in there. There's a bunch of different guys. You know, you don't have the same hitter one after another. Um, and both guys were able to get into a rhythm. And when they didn't, you know, kind of have it rolling and it had to challenge themselves a little bit, both guys worked out of trouble. Again, it was just that one swing. A guy put the ball, in the, you know, bat on the ball, but uh, you know, a good outing again for Burns. What did you see from uh, Booker's approach tonight? Well, I don't think it's any coincidence he hits a home run, or you know, at this point, it's the furthest and hardest ball he's hit this year with, with two strikes. When he kind of calmed down and, and cut down on the stride a little bit, it took a really short swing to a ball. It looked like it was a little bit middle end to me, and a foreshadowing, uh, you know, or foreshadowing of that deal was. The at bat before, one of the at bats before, he just shoots one up the middle, didn't try and do too much, took what he got. And, and then again, last night, foreshadowing or just a good sign is he hits a ball down the third baseline. So, um, you know, when he's running out of his spikes, trying to swing and doing all kinds of other stuff, you can kind of almost predict from the dugout, I don't know that this is going to go well. But if he's going to stand in there and just hit and, and use that hand speed and strength he has, he's, he's as, as good as anyone we got, minus the guy we talked about. Kyle, Kyle that, said what's, that what's going into trying to figure out that outfield right now? You know, you got some guys starting this day, some guys starting this day, and trying to figure out that third guy. Yeah, well, we're equal opportunity around here. So get his, you know, try and sneak Reese and that bat in there. Um, he's certainly got all kinds of skill, and I'm sure he's chomping at the bit or, as are others. And we'll probably have at least one different guy out there, or or maybe in the DH spot that's capable of playing outfield. And uh, we're, we're running out of opportunities come SEC play. Now, first game of SEC play, it doesn't mean the world ends or the world begins and, and everything's got to stand still. There will still be some things that will take place and guys will have a chance to prove themselves or earn different things. Uh, but for now, we're just kind of trying to spread the jam on the, on the bread as evenly as possible by giving all those guys opportunities. And, you know, then it will be up to us to read and see what we think we have. I mean, Kyle said that you've had conversations with him that, that are – like, hey, if you want to be consistent, just just be consistent. And what are those sorts of conversations like with players? Because I know you want to support them, they're yeah. your guys, you want them to, to feel good, but also, like, you got to produce. How do you walk that line as a coach? Yeah, well, first of all, it's good you put the pressure on him because to be consistent, be consistent. <laughs> it's really easy, but it's one of those things that's easier said than done. So how do you do it? Well, probably all kind of starts with mentality. Um, because if you get to this point and a coach is willing to have a conversation with you like that, that means he or the staff are really excited about what you do when you're in the moment or you're playing with an edge in his case or you're just even close to the best version of you. Uh, so kind of like when you go to the doctor, I mean, the first thing they got to do is point out what's, what's wrong, and then the next thing is let's get to the source or the root of what we have uh, 
you know, I don't know to say solve it is the right thing, but like most problems, it's a lot more simple than you think. And it's about just finding uh, the mentality that works for you consistently day in and day out. And then when things come up where you, you miss your pitch or bad call or a diving catch and now you're 0 for 3 when you could have been 1 for 3 and you're worried about your internet stats, what do you go to from there? And uh, I, I know I like it, kids like him and Simo and Blake that play with a lot of passion and a lot of energy. But if you let that shoot all over the place, it can hurt you more than it can help you. Um, so again, that's a part of it is just honing in that energy and that passion into the right direction. I know we talk about him pretty much every night, but when this guy opens play first, whether it's three hits tonight, but I'm just supposed to click and what he's playing at. What's that like for you as a golfer? Yeah, I mean, it's fun to watch him play because, again, we mentioned Luke last night. I think he's really found a way to play the game hard and, and be intense, but also kind of is – look at the – I mean – I probably look like a goofball. I'm not in shape to wear a uniform. We're the only coaches that wear uniforms. I think people, um, I love that SEC fans take it serious. Um, you know, even though I'm, I want Tennessee to win, I love this league, but <clears throat> people act like it's life and death. This is recess. Everybody's in costumes, you know, like it's Halloween, and this is recess. So um, he kind of approaches it almost perfectly. He, he's into it. He's prepared as well as anybody. And uh, then when he gets out there, he's just playing like Luke used to. Um, and then to see the results that you're talking about, it's fun. Um, I had to yell at the guys for being too giddy at Grand Canyon when he put one maybe farther than anyone's ever put one there. I don't know. Um, but uh, it, it's fun to come to the park and know that he's going to bring some energy. Maybe, maybe you're not into it or you're a little tense and you watch him go about it and it, it centers you a little bit. Yeah, I, you don't want to sound arrogant, but kind of expected it. Um, or when there was the deflection, it was like we got the right guy to, to do this if we can do it. And uh, anytime you see an infielder like rush or try and do something absolutely crazy, unless it's a Jeter playing the hole, which I think Maui's done before and, and made Sports Center for that, um, you probably, it probably wasn't meant to be. Um, but you see him come in and kind of approach it with composure like he did the double play last night. It makes you feel like you're kind of just watching a, a movie or you're watching practice. And like, I've seen this guy do this. And, and he, of course, he executed it. Now, for us to stand here and say that's one thing, to go out there and do it is very, very difficult. So um, that's why he's capable of playing shortstop in our league. As far as Griffin Merritt, what kind of impact has he had on the younger guys, particularly the outfield? Yeah, I mean, he's been called grandpa or old or – you know, whatever, and, and it's all it's doing is recognizing in a friendly way that he's got more experience than I think any well than anybody on our team. And uh, I'm not so sure that he doesn't really serve as basically a bonus coach uh, for us. I mean, especially when it comes to the outfielders um, hitting or just some of the freshmen that need to be pulled off to the side, and maybe they'd be more intimidated hearing it from a coach. Um, it's pretty impressive his leadership skills. And then he showed it his first weekend. He takes one off the nose um, and was cut. And I didn't even bother with our trainer, Woody, because I knew he wouldn't come out of the game. He's kind of a man's man, was a good football player in high school. Um, and then he can also play. I mean, all that stuff would be great. And he probably would have a significant role for our team, even if he didn't have the thump that he does and the ability to hit. But then he's got that, too. And uh, I'm just glad he, he got one out of the park. We've probably substituted for him more than we really should or want to. And then, of course, he's short the first two games of the year. So um, I'm all for him playing his best ball and the numbers racking up as the year goes on. Because having said all that, he's also been robbed of a couple homers just by the, the, the nature of the wind or whatever's going on that day. And tonight was a no-doubter. And I, I take confidence in knowing he's got a couple wall scrapers that he deserves in his back pocket, too. Thanks, Coach. Yeah.